What creatures lurk in the depths of the oceans? How do they survive in a world without sunlight? Under crushing pressure and in bone-chilling cold? Come with us to explore this secret world and discover its hidden wonders. The ocean is the largest and least explored habitat on Earth. More than 70% of the Earth is covered by water, and that's just the surface. The ocean is deep and holds an enormous living space. In fact, it represents more than 99% of the living space on this planet. Untold billions of organisms live beneath these waves. Life survives and flourishes, even in a habitat so uninviting that some scientists once believed it could not possibly support life. But how can life exist without sunlight, at temperatures near freezing, in water containing little or no oxygen, and at pressures so great they could flatten a submarine? And yet these waters teem with life, life that is perfectly adapted for existence in the fluid midwater realm and along the vast deep sea floor. Almost every known group of animals can be found in the ocean. All of them face the same three basic challenges, finding food, avoiding predators, and finding mates. Deep sea animals have overcome these challenges by evolving in strange and amazing ways. Let's explore the unique world they inhabit. There is little to eat in the deep sea. Bits of food drift slowly down from surface waters where there is enough sunlight to support photosynthesis and plant growth. These particles called marine snow include dead and dying organisms, animal waste, mucus, sediment, and dust. Most, but not all, of this marine snow is consumed by microbes and plankton. The rest ends up on the sea floor, creating an organic layer that sustains animals living on the bottom. Sunlight is scattered and absorbed by seawater. In clear water, it disappears at the rate of 10% for every 75 meters, or 240 feet, of descent. Watch how the colors change. Red, green, and yellow are the first colors to disappear. Blue persists to the deepest depths, but it too eventually disappears at around 800 meters, or the equivalent of eight football fields. Immense pressure is another challenge for animals living in the deep. Water is heavy, and as we travel deeper, the increasing pressure pushes in from all sides. As this styrofoam head was carried into the depths by a submarine, the pressure of the seawater compressed it, causing the head, seen on the left, to shrink to a fraction of what it was at the surface, as seen on the right. At 3,000 meters, the pressure is already more than 300 times that at the surface. As we move deeper, water temperature drops quickly. The average temperature of seawater in the deep ocean is only 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just above freezing. At some ocean depths, life-giving oxygen may be in short supply. Oxygen levels are high in shallow waters. As marine snow rains down into deeper water, much of it is consumed by bacteria. This feeding activity uses oxygen and creates a region known as the oxygen minimum zone. Even the task of finding food is not simple and has led to a remarkable array of food finding strategies. Active predators, such as these large squid, roam the ocean looking for slower-moving prey. Other animals conserve energy by waiting for food to come to them. Some set traps like this carnivorous tunicate that sits in the dark with an open mouth waiting for food to swim or drift inside. 
Living drift nets of stinging tentacles can act as traps too. Long chains of animals called siphonophores can reach up to 40 meters or 130 feet in length and have more than 300 stomachs. Some animals filter the water for food. This larvation secretes a net of mucus, then beats its tail to pump water through it. The net filters out very tiny particles, concentrating them into a compact, edible mass. Filter feeders such as these corals passively catch the marine snow that falls from above or drifts by in a current. Many animals eat sediment. This sea cucumber uses its tentacles to sweep large quantities of deep sea mud into its mouth. Its digestive system extracts nutrition and excretes what can't be digested, leaving behind characteristic piles of much cleaner sediment. Some animals take advantage of rare feeding opportunities. Occasionally, a large amount of food falls to the sea floor, providing a concentrated but short-lived food source. These urchins are eating kelp that was ripped from shallow beds in rough weather, carried out to sea and eventually sank to the deep sea floor. Scavengers like these hagfish follow odors released by carcasses. These hagfish defend their feast with a repulsive slime that discourages other scavengers from approaching. When a whale carcass is fresh, mobile animals like sharks and crabs move in to eat meat and fat from the bones. After the carcass is stripped, other animals take over. These newly discovered bone-eating worms have no mouth or gut, but do have a symbiotic bacteria inside their bodies that help break down the fats and oils in whale bones. Some animals in the ocean don't depend on food produced in sunlit waters. Instead of using energy harvested from sunlight and photosynthesis, they gain energy from chemicals released near the sea floor. Chemical-rich fluids spewing from hot hydrothermal vents are consumed by chemosynthetic bacteria that in turn support animals such as these crabs and amazing giant tube worms. Another strategy for surviving where there is only sporadic or sparse food is to increase the efficiency of food capture. Long, sharp teeth aid predators in catching and holding on to prey. This black swallower has an expandable stomach that enables it to swallow whatever prey it encounters. Since no sunlight ever reaches the deep sea, many animals have the ability to create their own light, a chemical process called bioluminescence. For example, this jelly looks red when we shine the submarine lights on it. But when we turn the lights off, we see that the jelly can make light of its own. At some depths, 80 to 90 percent of the animals are bioluminescent. Deep sea organisms use bioluminescence to avoid predators and to find food and mates. Some animals, like the sea pen, bioluminesce for reasons we don't yet understand. Most animals produce light using chemicals they synthesize from food they eat, but some, such as this deep sea anglerfish, glow because of bioluminescent bacteria inside their bodies. The anglerfish provides the bacteria with food in return, the bacteria provide the fish with a glowing lure. Many deep sea animals have bioluminescent organs around their eyes that act like headlights, helping them to see in the dark. Most animals' headlights are blue, the color that travels farthest through seawater. There are interesting exceptions, though. This shiny loose jaw fish has red headlights. Although most animals in the ocean can't see red light, this loose jaw can. These fish use their headlights like night vision goggles to sneak up on unsuspecting, unseeing prey. How can animals find each other in this vast habitat? 
Animals of the same species may only rarely come across each other, so deep sea animals have evolved various mating strategies. For example, some squid species mate when they encounter each other. The female stores the sperm, but does not develop eggs until environmental conditions are favorable. She fertilizes her eggs when the time is right. Another way to store sperm is to just hang on to its source. Many anglerfish males are tiny compared to the females. They also lack the lures and fangs that females use to capture prey. When a mature male anglerfish encounters a female, he latches onto her body and stays there for the rest of his life. His flesh fuses with hers, her bloodstream provides him with nourishment, and when the time is right, he becomes a ready source of sperm. Other animals, like these hermit crabs, may gather in large groups to mate, perhaps attracted by chemical or other cues. Hermaphroditic animals, such as this comb jelly, are able to reproduce on their own, preventing the need for a mate at all. They produce both sperm and eggs. Many deep sea animals grow slowly and live very long lives. Deep sea rockfish can live to be more than 200 years old. And some corals can live to be hundreds, even thousands of years old. Other challenges imposed by the deep sea environment include persistent cold and high pressure. These challenges have been met and overcome with a number of different solutions. As an example, the enzyme systems of many deep living animals are adapted to elevated pressures. And because cold and pressure reduce the fluidity of cell membranes, the structure of their cell walls is unusually constructed. To avoid predation, some creatures hide out in areas where other animals have a hard time surviving. The vampire squid, for example, lives at depths where the seawater contains very little oxygen. Many animals that live in the oxygen minimum zone have slow metabolic rates and are very good at extracting what little oxygen there is in this region. Schooling is a common strategy for confusing potential predators. There can be safety in numbers. Imagine how hard it would be for a predator to follow an individual fish in this school. Growing to a large size is another form of protection. Most predators cannot ingest something as big as this recently discovered jelly, which is a meter or three feet wide. Even without places to hide, animals can camouflage themselves. Because little or no red light reaches the ocean depths, Many deep sea animals are dark red, a color that absorbs rather than reflects available light. Black pigment also absorbs the dim blue light filtering down from above and light emitted by bioluminescence. No light reflects back to the eye of the predator, so black animals are also rendered invisible. Translucent animals are almost invisible in the open ocean. This transparent worm has an advantage because it disappears into the watery background. Some animals use a camouflage trick called counter-illumination to obliterate their silhouettes. These animals live in the twilight zone between 200 and 1,000 meters, or 660 to 3,300 feet, an area of dim filtered sunlight. The animal's bioluminescent belly lights, called photophores, blur into a light field that matches the color and intensity of the sunlight overhead so that predators looking up from below cannot see their silhouette. Animals also use light to actively defend themselves from predators. Some animals will release their bioluminescent chemicals into the face of an attacking predator, blinding or distracting their attacker long enough to escape. This shrimp spews light-emitting fluid out of its mouth like a fire-breathing dragon and then back flips away into the darkness. Brilliant displays of bioluminescence may serve as a burglar alarm. When caught in the clutches of a predator, prey may escape by attracting the attention of larger predators that will attack their attacker. 
For example, the pinwheel display of some common deep-sea jellies can attract the attention of a predator more than 100 meters or 330 feet away. The responses of animals to the harsh deep-sea environment are extremely diverse and still poorly understood. For as much as we have learned about our oceans in the past few decades, there are still many deep-sea animals whose bizarre adaptations are a mystery to us. New species, behaviors, and adaptations are constantly being discovered. We have much to learn about these amazing animals and the ecosystems they inhabit. <laughs>